If you go through that three-step questioning process, you'll get to the truth of what you truly want to pursue and stop yourselves from building a sandcastle which the waves of time will eventually wash away. If we spent a lifetime living someone else's life, how do we in our 30s or our 20s or our 40s or our 50s, how do we just decide, oh, I'm going to start finding out what my life is? I don't want to make this about you not getting your goals or not having pursuits or not wanting to become something because I want to do all those things too. But it's about why you're doing it. And it's also about making sure they're truly motivated by your inner desire, right? Like that's the point. If you want to be a doctor, become a doctor because you think that's how you're going to serve humanity, not because you think people will be impressed. If you want to go to Harvard or Princeton or Oxford or Cambridge, go there because you really want to study how to solve the world's problems, not because you think it looks good on your resume, right? That's the point that we're going after. So where do we start? One of my favorite ways to start is looking at what we value. And values are a very intangible word. And so there's a very easy way to figure out what you value. There's two things you have to look at. You look at how you spend your money, the most painful thing you can poss possibly do, go through your bank statement and look at where your money is being spent. That is what you value. The other thing that we spend, just like we spend money, is how we spend our time. Those are the two most perfect ways to see what you currently value. Your value isn't what's in your head, isn't what's in your heart, it isn't what's in your mind. It's how you spend your money and how you spend your time. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, where am I currently spending my time and where do I want to spend it? Now, studies also show that people, everyone has to go to work, so this isn't about what you do for work. People who had more meaningful, purposeful lives and were healthier, wealthier, and wise invested their time in education over entertainment. And Rangan, your, your audience is lucky because they get education and entertainment in one place. But, but that's the goal, right? Like that's the goal, that you're creating an opportunity for people to find education. The, the smartest, the wealthiest, the most healthiest, the wisest people in the world were reading books, watching documentaries, taking courses, listening to podcasts, learning to better themselves. And so that's the first place to start. The second place, when we look at that value audit, is I want you to write down three things that you're currently pursuing in life. It might be a promotion. It might be a new home. Whatever it is. Whatever it is that you are currently pursuing. And then I want you to ask this question. Is that your desire and your dream? Or is it coming from something outside of you? Is it coming from a pressure of a family member? Is it coming from an expectation because your friend just bought something? Where is that desire truly coming from? And the third and final question you want to ask yourself is, do I still want to pursue that? Or do I want to change how I pursue it? Or do I not want to pursue it at all? And if you go through that three-step questioning process, you'll get to the truth of what you truly want to pursue and stop yourselves from building a sandcastle which the waves of time will eventually wash away. And so that's yeah. what we get lost doing. We get lost building castles that we don't even want to live in. Yeah. It's so profound. And, you know, I really think that there's something unique about the times in which we live now there really is this dissatisfaction this lack of contentment i, I really think you, you're tapping on something that is that is really out there at the moment and really if people can get their heads around this i think it can transform their own lives but also transform the lives of the people around them which i think is really really exciting a lot of people and i would probably include myself in this have got an idea of what we think our values are but unless we actually go and audit the process of what are we spending our time and money doing, we have no idea if we really are living those values. So I really like the term audit because it's not your perception of how you think you're actually spending your money or spending your time. It's the reality of it. Is this a common thing, do you think, for people that they have a, there's a there is a gap between their desired values and their actual values? I genuinely believe that people are well-intentioned and want to do good in the world. I believe that. I believe that people have a good heart. 
They're smarter than we think they are. They want to do good in the world and they want to put out good energy. But you're exactly right that that intention needs to be converted and transferred into real behavior. And this is where you'll find, you know, you'll hear a friend or someone you know say, oh, you know, I really value loyalty and, and I really don't like gossip. And then you find out that that person was gossiping about you. And how does that feel? It, it completely feels like someone's broken your trust. And so often the way we see ourselves or want to see ourselves is amplified compared to how we actually behave. So we'll spot something. And there's a, there's a beautiful story that I share in the book, and, and there's lots of these across the book, uh, but there's these, there's these old ancient Indian and Zen stories. And there's this story of the evil king that goes to meet a good king. So the evil king goes to the, the castle, the quarters of the good king. And the good king, being a good king, invites the evil king inside for some dinner. They sit down. The servers bring out the plates. The plates are placed in front of the evil king and the good king. And they're just about to eat. And as just about as they're about to eat, the evil king switches the plates. And, and the good king goes, what's going on? Like, is that some ceremony in your time? Like, look, why are we doing this? And the evil king goes, well, I don't know. You might have poisoned my food. You, you might be trying to kill me. You might have poisoned it. And the good king just bursts out laughing. He's just like, really? Like, come on. This, like, I've invited you over for dinner. Like, this is my team. Like, you know, whatever it is. Like, let, let's start eating right now. And just about as he's about to eat, the evil king swaps it back again. And the good king goes, well, now what then? And he goes, well, I don't know. You might be double bluffing me. And that night, the evil king doesn't eat. And the good king happily eats his plate. The point is that so often we think we don't have some of the mistakes that we make, but we see them in everyone else. We see those mistakes in other people. So we'll say, oh, this person's not doing this right, or I don't like the way he or she talked to that person. But if we really do an audit in ourselves, we'll realize that we have a lot of those same challenges and feelings that we may think others have. And so for me, it's sometimes a really scary and daunting task to do that values audit, but it truly, truly is a beautiful process that we all need to go through to really realign our map and get our compass right and start moving in the right direction. I mean, is it the sort of thing that people do once or is it the sort of thing that people should revisit? And I guess, you know, if I was to ask you, when was the last time you did that exercise on yourself? Yeah, great question. So I'd say that you have to revisit like gardening. Because when you do a values audit, what you're really doing is gardening your values. And what that means is you're pulling out the weeds and you're planting new seeds. That's really the activity that's happening here. You're planting seeds in your mind, values that are good values, that are going to grow into fruits and trees and give shade to others and help other people. Or if you don't garden once a month, let's say Rangan leaves his he doesn't bother for the last six months during COVID. He just lets it be there. What's going to happen? That garden's going to be full of weeds. It's going to be full of yeah. stuff that he doesn't want there, right? It, it might attract bugs or other things that are there that he doesn't want. And that's what happens with our values, that after a while, our values start to attract dust. They start to attract uh, being covered over by so many other desires. So I would say it's a regular habit. I love the process of getting to know myself better. I love doing these audits. I love trying to figure out my values. I, I like potentially almost getting addicted to it. Like it feels good. And then yes. you start to, I feel, you start to switch off from the, the, the noise around you and you really start to become tuned in. Yeah who you are and what makes you what makes you tick learning about ourselves is actually the most fun thing in the world it's the most enjoyable thing in the world when you find out about a new way that your mind works and how this value is going to unlock this opportunity in your life uh, rung and spot on it's it's such a exciting thing to do and and i would encourage you to make it fun so i have I, i'll tell you an example of some of the fun activities that i love in the book so one of my favorite ones is I sometimes set myself the challenge of not comparing, not complaining, and not criticizing. And the way I like to do this test is I keep a jar of uh, post-it notes of every time I compare, complain, or criticize, I'll, I'll put it in there. And then I have another jar of every time I'm collaborative, uh, supportive to others, and grateful. 
And what I love doing is almost doing a competition with myself because I love being competitive too. I love engaging that in a competition with myself of how can, often can I make sure? So what you find is the first day you realize, oh no, I, I complained 10 times today. The second day you're like, oh, I only did seven times today. And the third day you're like, I only did four. And the fourth day you're like, oh, only once. And then on the weekend you binge complain again and it all goes up again. But the point is that you make it fun and enjoyable because what you understand is that you are not your criticism. You are not these negative thoughts. You are not these negative beliefs. They've just become conditioned and habits, just as your garden is not weeds. And what happens is we start thinking that we are our pain. We start thinking that we are stress, right? We say things like, I am just a stressful person, right? I am just a negative person. And the truth is you're not. You're just going through a negative space and time. You're just adopted a negative habit or a negative thought, but you are not a negative person. It's just in the same way as you are not unhealthy. You've just adopted unhealthy habits. And I think when you start making that disconnect between you and the habits you have, you start to realize, oh, if I change the habits, I naturally change. But you are separate from that. So never get into that Never get into that rhetoric with yourself of I am a negative person or I am a failure or I am a loser or whatever it may be. Yeah, I think it's so important that Jay, that our thoughts are important, our words are important. And I think many people, once you become tuned into it, when, when you start to identify where you're using negative self-talk, it, it becomes so easy to identify in everyone around you. You know, it's, it's something that I spent a lot of time thinking about, both for myself personally, for bringing up my children. It's something we talk about a lot at the dinner table, about how we're saying things, because words are powerful. You know, words become thoughts, right? And they, they, they sort of can... You know, you mentioned those things. People often do think that they are their pain, they are their feelings, without realizing that these things are transient, they come and go, and you are actually separate from that. But if you define yourself by that, it becomes very hard to change. Really hope you enjoyed that conversation. Please do think about one thing that you can take and apply into your life. Inspiration is not enough, you need to take action. If you did enjoy that, please do press subscribe, hit that notification bell, and why not check out this conversation that I picked out that acts as the perfect follow-up.